Jean-Philippe, a lot of damage to the car, both front and rear. What happened? Uh, it was a big lake ahead of me, and uh, I, my car hydroplane, and I lose the control of my car. I hit uh, the, the barrier, and um, we have a lot of damage. It's a very stupid accident because I was very slow, and, uh, and it, I was, uh, my, my steering wheel was threat. It was not my fault, but it's very... Um, very disappointing to, to have this uh, this damage. The car, the car behind me had the same problem, and the, the car ahead of me had the same also. So it was not possible for me to keep the control of the car in this part of the track at this moment. And it was all just because of the rain. Yes, because we had the uh, slick tires, and it was uh, completely wet. Thank you. So Jean Philippe Belloc sharing the Labra competition fiber. And he was the man who started it, and as we saw there, a lot of damage at the front of that car. At least they made it back to the pits, unlike the uh, Equipe France machine, the uh, 57 car that was heavily involved in that accident. So we're looking at the picture of the car, still running around at very much reduced speed. David, safety car or not, there are certain parts of the track that you certainly cannot take at anything like full racing pace. And here, the Indianapolis, uh, that's uh, very much the case. That's where the rain sort of starts down there. And uh, yes, you can see there isn't even a safety car in front of those cars that we can see. And they're going very slowly indeed. I noticed before the cars were not even managing to keep up with the safety car at some point or another. And uh, they're coming up to where the big accident actually was. So they'll be uh, very, very careful there as to uh, how much they do to that there. Well, we sort of lost what was going on in the Audi bit. We've seen uh, new bodywork being, uh, or the old bodywork being moved around for the number two car. And it's stood upright in the garage. There's the Equipe de France Viper coming back in. Now, I wonder whether Aiello's car was actually pushed backwards into the garage. I'm I, would, not... I would say very much yes is the answer. We didn't see not it at the time. Sure why, though. The but... rear engine cover was off it and uh, well, when they, back in. Well, when they took the front wheel off, uh, he had to look underneath it and uh, the, the mechanic was obviously very worried about something. So immediately they put the jacks under it and spun it around and disappeared into the uh, garage with it. When you're in the garage, you can have as many people working on as possible but um, not outside. Oh, David Terrian can't get into the pit lane. There's not enough lock on yes, that car exactly. to get can't in. get the thing to turn, so he's, he's going to have to use his 8-litre V10 to try and snowplow through the gravel trap. Now, that's very dangerous. They are going to have to go and rescue him because he is beached right in the pit lane entry, and he may well actually be partly blocking well, that. abandoning it now. It looks well, like... You won't abandon it not this early in a 24 hour race. Uh, he's getting out to help push it back. He will try and uh, get it into the pit lane somehow. He's so at the entrance of the pit lane, he's actually left the circuit, but it's quite a tight chicane coming into the pit lane, and obviously, with the front of the uh, suspension broken, he didn't have the steering ability to uh, actually get into the pit lane and ended up on the gravel trap there, doing about two miles an hour. Yeah, local man as well. David, in fact, won the World Karting Championship not far from here at Laval, about uh, 70, 80 kilometres to the west of here, back in. Uh, 1995, we had that on, live on Eurosport, great performance, suddenly a new star, went on to become French Formula 3 champion, and last year was the, as we said, FI, uh, the Sports Racing World Cup champion, driving with the Ferrari squad for JMB Gaysa, but really, this is, we talked to him yesterday, and he said, I think we can really win this category. Well, it's raining here on the start-finish line now, we just saw pictures of the 36 Dick Barber racing car in the pits, but it is actually starting to rain here in front of us in our commentary window, and the number two, the former lead Audi, has just been dragged out as we see what remains of Ray Rowan's hopes and dreams of Le Mans racing being dragged in. That's a very substantial off, and David, that was Martin trying to spin the car or trying to drive around the problem. He's gone off backwards, not into anything. He's spun trying to avoid the problem and just clattered into the barriers. It looks very much that way. He's uh, definitely gone backwards into it. But it looks like uh, nobody's managed to uh, get out of that big accident there. And they've all had damage of one type or another. Well, we can see the Equipe de France team car trying to be dragged back into position. Look, this is the Mulsanne straight, and it's dry there. The wipers aren't on. There's no water beading up the windscreen, so the, the rain is shifting around this circuit. The number 34 MG left the pits about five minutes ago and is now back in with Anthony Reid at the helm. We're going to try and get down. Amanda Stretton is in the pits with Hugh Chamberlain. You can just see there in the corner. And David Terrian, desperate to get back in. But let's pick up with MG and Hugh Chamberlain. Hugh, uh, second time the car's been in. What's going on? Well, we've... Uh, I think you see we've had a bit of a problem with the weather. Uh, the first thing was that this uh, the Anthony Reid car went off. It came 
through some of the quick stuff out the back and the and uh, the cars got away from him under the, in the weather. Luckily, all he hit was the rear wing and just kissed the barrier with it, but it bent all the, all the wing supports. We had to change that. And now, because the pace car's out and we've got howling rain and gales and God knows what down here, they've decided to change a couple of other things while it's, it's still behind the pace car. So it's not, there's no other problem, as far as I know. It's just a case of getting things uh, put right. And uh, this weather means that your traditional attire of shorts is uh, not going to be required? Uh, no, I don't think so, not at the moment. I think a bit brave man that wandered around in shorts here. Thanks a lot, Hugh. <laughs> right on, see well, in years gone by, that would normally be me walking up and down the pit lane for Radio Le Mans, because I always figured that if it was going to rain, shorts took half as long to dry as long trousers. So <laughs> the field's still behind the safety car. Hugh Chamberlain taking the time, as he said there, to re repair some of the damage uh, caused by Anthony's brief little spin. And uh, yes, as we said earlier on, they were working at the back of the car, so not, it seems, a recurrence of the engine problems that blighted them in testing and in practice. But Raining here, now slightly less on the pit straight, but David again, looking at shots around the circuit, it is still raining and pretty much everywhere. It does look now as though the rain has uh, started down at the far side. It's worked its way all the way up to where we are at the other side of the circuit. So yes, it very much looks like it's raining everywhere around the circuit now. Um, once they manage to get all the uh, cars cleared from around about, then uh, I'm pretty sure they'll bring the pace car back in and let the cars get on and race in the wet. Uh, they're quite capable of racing in the wet, so uh, they'll be allowed to get on and do what they need to do, and hopefully, uh, where the driver says, I couldn't do anything about it, well, I'm terribly sorry, but there's nobody else in the car, <laughs> except for that driver to do anything about it, so it's very much up to him, and that's the way it is. Um, we can just see now there's a car being dragged out the way, it's trying to get into no the No wonder lane. David Tyrion couldn't turn it. Did you see how floppy the wheel was there? It must be held on by the brake hose and nothing else. Jan Lammers comes in. Now, I don't think he stopped before. Incidentally, Martin Brundle leads the race for Bentley. Uh, could I just point out at this stage, with seven laps gone, Frank Beeler second, Klaus Graf third for Panos. So I wonder if he stopped for tyres or not. Jan Lammers is in the pits. Laura Aiello has been in the pits and is now a lap down. And, uh, well... Just ahead of Jan Lammers, some 10 spots up the pit lane, a flatbed truck has brought in the remains of the Pilbeam Nissan. Martin O'Connell jumped out of it and walked into the back of the garage. I hope Amanda Stretton will have a chance to get down and talk to him in the next few minutes. And uh, there, David Terrian. Well, there's not an awful lot to get back into, is there, David, to, to start with? There's no door on it, but I know that feeling, because I remember being here many years ago and having uh, a tyre burst. And I took the door off, laid it down, and then got in the car and drove off and forgot all about it. it looks like uh, <laughs> Don't! he's done something, but well, he hasn't done something similar. I think he's had the door ripped off his car. But you can see a very big roll cage sitting right beside him. Uh, very much uh, safety orientated on all these race cars here at Le Mans. It's a very fast circuit, and safety is most important. You can see that big roll cage there protecting him. It's amazing he got the car back this far, even to the pit lane, but just uh, just too tight to get in. Looks as though one of the steering arms has snapped, or uh, one of the suspension cross members or uh, uprights or something has uh, has finally broken because he was dragging it around, basically using only the rear wheels to push the car forward. He had no steering whatsoever; was just snow plowing his way through the escape road. And I think that they really are going to try and drag him in uh, with a bit of luck. There is a five-time Le Mans winner, uh, not in the orange top. He's in the Bentley jacket, in fact, David. Uh, David? Derek Bell uh, has been uh, brought in by the Bentley team to give them the uh, expert advice that a five-time winner has uh, got to offer. The Golf Audi just about to leave the pits being held as the safety car comes round, so they will go a lap down on the leader, which is Martin Brundle in the Bentley. No wonder Dinger is looking so happy. And uh, Jan Lammers ready to come out as well. I wonder how long it's going to be, David Leslie, before drivers who rushed in for wet weather tyres are going to be as keen as rushing in for slick tyres. Um, that's going to be the big problem. That is the uh, dilemma that all you team managers have here, because if you rush in for the wet tyres on, yes, very sensible, good thing to do, uh, very safety conscious. But uh, as we said before, this circuit dries very quickly, and if it dries very quickly, all of a sudden you will need your slick tyres again in a hurry, because... Uh, the uh, dry tarmac will just shred, absolutely shred your uh, wet weather tyres. David, the other thing probably people at home are wondering is why the safety car is staying out so long. We know it's wet now, the race has been neutralised for some seven, uh, nearly seven laps. Why has it not come in earlier? I think uh, they had to change, they had to get all the cars off. The cars that we've seen on the TV are certainly now uh, all off the circuit. But uh, once that's done, they will have to uh, sweep the circuit, make it good, make it uh, right again. If some of the barriers...